here's a new argument, except that it isn't. It's the argument that polystrate fossils, a term which is not a geologic term and is found almost exclusively in creationist prattle, present a problem for conventional geology and evolutionary theory, except that it doesn't. Here's our friend Stephen Bauman, who knows more than a little about the subject, to tell us why. Hey everyone, let's talk about polystrate fossils and the creationist claim as simply as possible that these are evidence of a global flood. That is simply untrue, all right? Number one, if there was such a thing, you would expect that these would all be at the same uh, stratigraphic horizon and these would be global and they aren't. Most are very in young sediments. They're not in old sediments, all right? So they form, tend to form in certain environments, which I'm gonna get into here in a second. But they are basically just standing up tree trunks um, with the roots in and they're covered with sediments. Well, what kind of sediments? Actually, most of these are in areas of active volcanism like Yellowstone. Okay, a tree will start to grow, volcano goes off, decimates the forest, you got some trunks, ash comes down, sediments. It, it, you know, we argue if it's sedimentary or volcanic, but it's ash, it's volcanic ash. This is not laid by water. All right, all you got to do is look at the surrounding rock and you can tell that. Other ones exist in delta environments. Others exist in glacial environments. Uh, if you had, and, and we can see this happen today, like you have a bunch of trees at the base of a glacier and the moraine, the end moraine were to break and you had a catastrophic outwash, well, the trees would get knocked down and some of the stumps would remain and they would get quickly buried by outwash deposits, okay? This, I mean, it, it's a catastrophic flood, but it's not a global flood, all right? Now, there are some that are old in the Carboniferous, in, um, it, in the Pennsylvanian, as we call it here. Now, the thing with these is they tend to have grown. This is the age of coal, okay? Uh, that's why it's called Carboniferous. You know, you get the first massive trees appear, and anyways, anyways, they would be in delta environments. You get coal and stuff, they die, most would fall over, some would stay standing up. And during the end of the Carboniferous, we had these coal swamps near equatorial latitudes, but we had a glaciation going on in the Southern Hemisphere. So if the ice would retreat, you would get a sea level rise and you would get a rapid burial, but not all the time, not all, these trees would not always get buried. I mean, you can go to swamps now and see trees growing out of the bottom of the swamp, all right? The same thing happened in the Carboniferous. Now, sometimes the sediments would bury the tree halfway up, but the interesting thing about that is, you know, the top of the tree might die or might rot away because of the water, but then you would start to see new branches and new roots form before it became buried even deeper. Well, how do new branches and roots form in something that's buried at the bottom of an ocean basin? I don't know of any trees growing in the abyss. Um, call me you know maybe i'm missing something but i'm pretty sure there aren't any okay so the carboniferous does have some but those are low-lying deltaic areas okay um just like the, the the just like the everglades of today you're gonna you're gonna have polystrate trees forming in that stuff too if sea level continues to rise and sediments continue to be dumped on from incoming streams and creeks and whatnot so and the fact that these are not all at the same stratigraphic horizon, these form throughout different times. Because remember, stratigraphy is the identification of the rocks that these things are growing out of. And creationists ignore that the vast majority of the, uh, these are in volcanic ash. Okay? I, that volcanic ash is not derived from water. It's derived from volcanoes. And you'll see, and, and the volcanic ash will bury these things. And then that of paleosol, or geosol, will form, which will not form in a deep ocean abyss uh, because you need things near surface to do things. And another tree will start to grow, grow. And then another volcanic explosion, eruption will occur and bury those. And so on and so forth. So you get stacks of these. That's not going to happen in a one-year event. Anyway, before this gets too long, I'm going to turn it back over to Sai, and I hope you guys understood that. In approximately one year, the wicked pre-flood world consisting of a supercontinent is destroyed and a new world with seven continents rises from the waters. 
Wait a minute. I, I thought the waters receded. All right. Anyway, they are covered with layers of fossil filled sediment deposited by water, testifying of the biblical account in Genesis. Noah's family is given an opportunity to start over, to be fruitful, multiply, and fill the earth. Giggity, 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 let's have sex. Interesting. That's a lot of stuff to occur in one year. Eh, I'm not buying it. <laughs> Creationist plate tectonics. Cross-continent deposition. Sediment layers deposited across continents. This is a creationist argument that similar sedimentary layers have been found in locations in the various continents. If this were a valid argument, there would be no need to even go to various locations on different continents. Everything would be right where you are. Um, uh A power conformity is a situation in which strata are parallel and there is no apparent erosion. This is a common creationist method, arguing from exception. It assumes that the rapidity of some depositions means rapidity of all depositions. <laughs> Warped rocks. Rock layer sequences deposited rapidly before being bent. Okay, are we talking about warped rocks or rapid deposition? Creationists have failed to demonstrate rapid deposition on a global scale, so apparently just showing real bent rock formations is supposed to somehow prove the unrelated claim of rapid deposition. In reality, this bending of rock layers is well understood and has nothing to do with rapid deposition. Some rock material becomes quite plastic under extreme pressure and heat. If the pressure does not exceed the internal strength of the rock, fracturing does not occur and we end up with deformed or bent rock layers. I'd like you to remember this. Vertical walls show that it was carved quickly. Keep that in mind. Okay, we're once again trying to equate Engineer's Canyon, which was formed by water flowing out of Spirit Lake on Mount St. Helens, to the Grand Canyon. Here's why this is stupid. The sediments on Mount St. Helens were unconsolidated volcanic ash, which is easily eroded. The Grand Canyon was carved into harder materials, you know, rock. Also, the walls of Mount St. Helens Canyon slope at 45 degrees. Remember what I asked you to keep in mind? On this very same display, it says that vertical walls show that it was carved quickly. Here's Engineer's Canyon, which was carved quickly. Where's the vertical walls? The Ice Age. Creationists have to insist on a single ice age that resulted from this global flood. This, however, is not the case. At least five major ice ages have occurred throughout Earth's history. The amazing story of the lost flood shows us that these are not annual rings. Once again... And here's what caused the single ice age. Showing once again, we made stuff up. We see that observable, testable, and repeatable science contradicts the secular belief in millions of years. 
Well, I think that's a good stopping point for this episode. I'd like to thank you all once again for watching. Please like, subscribe, share, have at it. And uh, we'll see you next time.